Hello, my dear students and welcome in the Indoor Environmental Control course. I am Associate Professor Kareem Galal. This time I will explain the way to control the sunlight. The title of this lecture is Control of Sunlight. In some design cases, it is found that sunlight must be controlled. The first question is, will the sun reach the window considered, or will it be obstructed by external objects such as other buildings? When the critical time is selected such as the first day of the summer season at mid-daylight, then the extent of sun penetration can be examined. This is a purely geometrical task. The sun's position in relation to the window is to be established first. Then the horizontal shadow angle, HSA, at this time should be specified. It is the azimuth difference between the sun's direction and the orientation. The second step is to specify the solar altitude, ALT. It must be projected onto a plane perpendicular to the window, to get the vertical shadow angle, VSA. Once these two angles are known the sun penetration, the sunlit patch on the floor or on the work plane can be constructed. A beam of solar radiation incident on a window pane may produce an irradiance of up to over 450 watt slash meter square. But, how to control and reduce this amount of the solar radiation especially in the hot arid zones? The answer is, type of glass. With a glass transmittance of 0.78 the above 450 W slash M2 would be reduced to 350 W slash M2. The use of tinted, heat absorbing or reflective, glasses may provide a remedy, avoid glare, and reduce sunlight. The problem is that they affect diffuse light as much as beam light and that their properties are fixed, they have no selectivity in time, perform the same way in winter as in summer, they would reduce daylighting even when it is scarce. A fixed control should only be used where it's necessity. It is always useful to allow some degree of control to the user, be it an adjustable thermostat, an adjustable shading device or just a set of blinds. Even automatic, motorized, louves have been shown to be disliked by occupants of offices. But wait, what is about the areas of the building that are not reached by daylighting through side windows? There are many tools to solve this problem, but they are very expensive. Beam sunlighting is very useful in these areas. Several techniques are in use. Prismatic glass one of these methods. It is often used, normally for the top one third of a window to divert the beam of sunlight, by refraction, upwards, to the ceiling, which will then diffuse it to the rear part of the room. Laser grooved acrylic sheets, divided into small elements by laser cuts to some 90% of the thickness, which will serve the same purpose partly by refraction, but mainly by full internal reflection in each element. These have a particular relevance for roof lights in low latitude climates, where the midday sun can be quite a problem. In a prismatic roof light they can completely reject high altitude, near zenith, radiation, but would admit the morning and late afternoon sunlight. Light shelves have been used for similar purposes for many years. In its simplest form this would be a horizontal element, an extended transom, across the window at a height of about 2.1 m with a reflective upper surface, which direct the light up to the ceiling. These would work well in a fairly high room, 3 meters. If mounted externally, they could also serve as a shading device for the lower part of the window, but it may be difficult to keep the top surface clean. But wait, we face the same problem again, inactiveness and unresponded systems. Some light shelves have a specular top surface, some are diffusing. Partially reflecting semi-transparent materials have also been used. Various clever profiles have been developed to respond to the changing solar altitude and adjustable, to compensate for summer, winter difference in the sun's path. A fully enclosed light shelf with a flexible reflective film system provides seasonal adjustment by using a flexible reflective film with a V-shaped shelf. It is named, Valra Project. A heliostat is another system used for roof lights. It is a motorized system, the mirror tracking the sun. A fixed mirror can direct the solar beam downwards where it may enter the room through a diffuser. This system serving a single-story building, or the top floor of a multi-story building, 
can have an efficiency around 50%. This means that if a solar beam of 60 KLX is incident on the primary mirror of 1 square meter, of the 60 KLM light flux some 30 KLM is emitted by the ceiling diffuser, which can produce an average illuminance of 300 LX over a 100 square meters area of the work plane. A system of mirrors and light tubes would allow the use of such systems over several stories. These light tubes are made of some highly polished material or lined with a reflective film. A light tube of an elongated oblong section can have tapping off mirrors at several levels and after each of these its size is reduced. The advanced versions of these tubes are using fiber optics materials to raise the light efficiency. A version of light tubes is the anatolic ceiling, non-imaging reflective duct. This has an upward looking collector at the outer end, a 3 to 4 m long duct within the ceiling space. A concentrator slash optical fiber lighting system is the futuristic development for these techniques. It is a mini dish, 200 mm diameter, connected to an optical fiber conductor of 1 mm diameter, produces a concentrated beam of 11 clux conveyed to a diffuser at a distance of 20 m. Thanks for following me and I hope that I have explained the topic well. This material is copyrighted. Associate Professor Kareem Galal 2021. All rights reserved.